To have the best results from the Andai calibration, it's important to cover different perspectives of the calibration board. This image demonstrates how the capture should more or less look like. The calibration board should be captured from different angles, and it's recommended to have it centered on the field of view of the camera. The Andai calibration can be performed on eye hand systems, it means camera mounted on the robot, or on high to hand systems, it means the camera is mounted stationary commonly above the robot. The Andai calibration process is very similar for both systems. We are going to start by performing the Andai calibration on an eye in hand system, but at the end of the video, there is a small clip on how to generate a dataset, poses and point clouds, for an eye-to-hand system. In this video tutorial, we are going to start by capturing the calibration board from the above perspective, and we are going to cover all the perspectives presented before. When generating the dataset, we open the Zivit Studio, and we perform a capture using Capture Assistant. Then, we set it to live mode. This is helpful to ensure that the calibration board is centered on the field of view of the camera and the Aruko marker is visible on all captures. It also helps to understand if we have good data on the acquired point cloud. In other words, we can visually inspect that we don't have holes on the calibration board in a point cloud. Once we are happy with a robot pose, in Robot TK we click Get Position, and then we add a new target. After adding the target, we change it from Cartesian to Joint. This will change the target icon from red to green. By doing this, we ensure that we have a repeatable and eye calibration process, because with this change, the joint position of the robot will always be the same when the robot moves to that target. Not doing this can lead to robot crashes. In this tutorial, we are going to create 16 calibration poses. It is recommended to have between 10 and 20, so 16 is more than enough. Take your time to make sure that all captures are good, take a look at the SNR map and the depth map to see if there is any missing data on the calibration board. This is a good example of missing data on the calibration board. As you can see, this is easily detected on the depth map. In this case, this was solved by changing the positioning of the camera. In this video, you can see me connecting to the robot in Robot TK every time I want to save a pose. This is because I prefer to move the robot physically. And to do that, I need to switch from remote mode to local mode in order to move it. This will break the connection between the robot TK and the robot. It is also possible to move the robot from the pendant or even from the robot TK. The outcome is the same, it's just a matter of preference. At this point, we already have all the poses saved on the Robot TK software. So now, we need to make sure that the robot will not crash when it goes from one pose to the next one. 